out of all of the many chemical substances found in the human body, water, good old H2O, is by far the most common and most important. Life cannot exist without water. Why is this simple molecule so essential for life? Let's examine the properties of water that make life possible. First, water is a powerful and flexible solvent. A solvent is a chemical that is able to dissolve other substances, which we refer to as solutes. When a solute is dissolved and evenly distributed within a solvent, a solution is formed. A common water-based or aqueous solution generated by the body is sweat, which consists of water the solvent, and its dissolved salts, which are the solutes. As a solvent, water provides an excellent environment for the body's metabolic reactions. As we've learned, water is a polar molecule held together by polar covalent bonds, with many water molecules held together by hydrogen bonds, shown by the dotted lines. Water has both positively and negatively charged areas. The hydrogen end carries a partial positive charge, and the oxygen end, being more electronegative, has a partial negative charge. Having both positive and negative charges at either pole makes water especially capable of dissolving chemical substances that carry a charge, such as ions or other polar molecules. The phrase, like dissolves like, describes water's ability to dissolve other polar or charged substances. Hydrophilic solutes, such as salt and sugar, can easily dissolve in water because they carry a charge or contain polar covalent bonds. These solutes are described as being water-soluble. The term hydrophilic actually means water-loving, which describes the chemical attraction these solutes have with water. For example, when crystals of table salt, NaCl, an ionic compound, are placed into water, the positively charged hydrogen ends of the water molecules are attracted to the negatively charged chloride ions of the salt. And the negatively charged oxygen ends of the water molecules are attracted to the positively charged sodium ions of the salt. As the water molecules dissolve the salt, they surround the sodium and chloride ions and keep them separate from each other. This process is called dissociation. As the sodium and chloride ions dissociate in water, they are less likely to collide and reform their ionic bonds back into NaCl. Even though water is a powerful solvent, it does have limitations regarding what it can and cannot dissolve. Hydrophobic molecules cannot dissolve in water because they contain mostly nonpolar covalent bonds and are uncharged. These molecules are described as being water insoluble. The term hydrophobic means water-fearing, which describes how these molecules are repelled by water. Examples of hydrophobic molecules include lipids, such as the fats and oils. A second property of water is that it provides an excellent environment for the body's metabolic reactions. Water can play the part of either a reactant or a product, depending upon the reaction. In a type of decomposition reaction called a hydrolysis reaction, water acts as a reactant that helps break down larger nutrient molecules into smaller building blocks in the various reactions of digestion. 
in a type of synthesis reaction called a dehydration synthesis. Two smaller molecules are covalently bonded together to form a larger molecule. For every bond formed, a water molecule is released as one of the products. One way to help you remember this reaction is through the word dehydration, which we commonly use to mean a loss of water. An example of a dehydration synthesis reaction is when amino acids are bonded together to form larger proteins during protein synthesis. A third property of water is its high heat capacity, which means water can absorb and release a large quantity of heat without drastically changing its own temperature. Water is able to do this because of the many hydrogen bonds holding water molecules together. When water absorbs heat, some of water's hydrogen bonds are broken. This reduces the amount of heat energy available to speed up the movement of water molecules, which would increase water's temperature as a result. Because a large percentage of the body's mass consists of water, the body is better adapted to maintain its stable temperature homeostasis with the changing temperature of the surrounding environment. Related to this is water's high heat of vaporization, which means that it takes a large amount of heat to vaporize water from a liquid into a gas. For example, when you put a kettle of cold water on the stove to make a cup of tea and turn the heat to high, it takes approximately five minutes for water to come to a boil and produce steam, which is water vapor, water in its gaseous state. This property also plays an important role in body temperature homeostasis. As you work out and perspire, or sweat, water evaporates out of sweat pores on the skin surface and removes a lot of heat, which has a cooling effect on the body. The fourth and final property of water is its role as a lubricant, acting as the main ingredient in the body's various secretions. For example, water makes up most of the mucus secreted throughout the digestive tract, which helps food smoothly slide along from organ to organ. Water is also the main component of the serous fluids that help lubricate the body's cavities, allowing organs to slide against each other with a minimum of friction. Water also makes up the synovial fluid secreted by the joint cavities, helping the bones and connective tissues smoothly glide past each other during movement. 